Okay, so this is lesson 7.2, Rational Exponents. Uh, we are going to cover four objectives. Use ex exponential notation for nth roots. Define and use expressions with rational exponents. Convert between radicals and rational exponents and use the rules for exponents with rational exponents. Um, so if we look at a objective one here, it says use exponential notation for nth roots. Consider the expression three and a half raised to the second power. We can simplify this as follows. Three and a half times three and a half, which we have, we're using a squared equal to a times a. Then we can use the product rule where we take the uh, exponents and add them because we're multiplying and we get three to the first power, which is just three. Also by definition, we can take the square root of three, which is what we were given and square it. So the square root of three times the square root of three and get three. And because both three to the one half uh, squared and the square root of three squared are equal to three, it, it seems reasonable to define three uh, to the one half is equal to the square root of three. This suggests the following generalization, right? Um, the other thing I would suggest you to pay attention to is that here um, we could also use the power to a power rule, which would mean that we would take um, three as the base and the exponent times the raised exponent. And that would give you three to the first power as well. So it just kind of depends on how you see it and what you would prefer. So this way is using the power of a power rule. Okay, oops, sorry. Okay. Um, if the nth root of a is a real number, then a to the one over n power is equal to the nth root of a. For example, one, four to the one half is equal to the square root of four. Eight to the one third is equal to the cubed root of eight. And 16 to the one fourth power is equal to the fourth root of 16. Notice that the denominator of the rational exponents is the index of the radical. All right, so, um, when we go from exponential form to radical form, the denominator becomes the index and then vice versa. Um, when we go from radical form to uh, exponential, it'll become the denominator of the, of the uh, exponent. So the 81 to the one half is equal to the square root of 81 which we know is plus or minus nine. B is gonna be 125 to the one third, which will be the cubed root of 125, which is just five. C is negative 625 to the one fourth, which is the fourth root of negative 625. Uh, but wait, that has no uh, parentheses. So we actually write the negative outside. Otherwise we wouldn't have been able to do it. That gives us an answer of a negative five. Now this one, this one we do have the negative inside. And because this is an even index, the answer here is not a real number. Okay. Uh, here we would do the cubed root of negative 125. So that is equal to negative five. Notice that um, E and B are similar, but they have opposite signs. And that's because when we have an, an odd index, 
we have to be careful of our sign. Whereas when we have an even index, we can take the plus or minus route. All right, so for F, we have the fourth root of one over 16, which we can write as the fourth root of one over the fourth root of 16. So we actually get one over two. I believe, I believe you could also give me plus or minus one over two. I would take either of those, okay? All right, let's look at this a little bit closer. Okay, so this objective is telling us to find and use expressions of the form a to the a to the m over n, so exponential form. We know that eight to the one third is equal to the cubed root of eight. Now we can define a number like eight to the two thirds where the numerator of the exponent is not one. For past rules, the exponents to be valid, eight to the two thirds equals eight to the one third times two. So we would, because eight to the one third equals uh, the cubed root of eight, then we would be taking two squared, which is four. So if we generalize, generalize this rule, we see that we have um, a to the one over n power raised to the m power. Okay, so let's take a look at what they're giving us. Okay, so. Let's make it just a little bit bigger. All right, so here they're showing us um, to be careful that the base is four. So did we do A and B? No, we didn't. Okay, must have, I must have liked this probably for what's down at the bottom. Um, so if we take a look at what they're showing us here, we can recall that A to the negative n is going to be a one over a to the n okay they switch spots and a cannot be zero so that's probably why i pulled this um just to remind you what happens when we work with negative exponents okay so let's work these out we would have a which is 32 to the two-fifths power And if we rework this, we would get 32 squared to the one fifth power. 32 squared is 1024, and we're taking it as a fifth root. So that equals four. Um, eight to the fifth power is 32, seven, six, eight. You would probably need your calculator for this one. Um, so I'll just show you how to do that. Let's clear what we have. And we're finding the cubed root of eight to the fifth power. Okay, and we can see that it's 32. And if you really wanted to, we could also do eight to the fifth power, three, two, seven, six, eight, and now do the cubed root of three, two, seven, six, eight, and also get 32.
See, we have a negative on the outside, 103 halves power. Um, so that means we need to do negative on the outside, 100 cubed, and then we're taking it to the one half power. So that's negative square root, 100 cubed is one with one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Um, so that gives us negative square root of a thousand squared. So we're looking at an answer of negative 1,000. Now we're allowed to have negative on the outside because uh, that's on the outside. If the negative were on the inside, it wouldn't have worked for a square root. So, uh, clear all this. We need the cubed root of negative 125 to the fourth power. And we get 625. So you guys really need to use your calculators on this test. It will save you a lot of time. Okay, now this is the one we gotta be careful about. We're gonna, we would take negative 121 and cube it and then take that answer to the one half power. Well, no matter what you get here, which I will do it just to show you it, it's negative one, seven, seven, one, five, six, one. You cannot have a negative under an even index. So this is not a real number. All right, so evaluate each exponent. Again, we could just use the calculator if we wanted to, but we will take 243 to the negative three fifths. That's the same as doing one over 243 to the three fifths power. Now it's positive. Um, and that's gonna be one over the fifth root of 143. Four eight nine zero seven, which ends up being one over twenty seven. Again, if you don't believe me, you can take it to your own calculator. As long as you use your parentheses correctly, or you, you know, do your um, orders correctly, you should get the same thing. If you want me to show you real quick, I can do, I can do it. We can do 243 to the fifth power. Oh, 243 to the fifth power. Nope, sorry, not to the fifth power, cubed. Okay, then take the fifth root of that answer and you get 27. And if you put it on in a fraction on the bottom, you get one over 27. So here we'll make another fraction before 
to the positive five halves, which is one over the fifth root, nope, square root of four to the fifth. So one over the square root of 10, 24, which is equal to one over 32. All right. Again, you guys can work some of these out on your calculators by yourselves. Now, if you noticed what we did before, when we had numbers over one, we flipped them, we took the reciprocal and that made the exponent positive. So we're gonna actually do the same thing here. We're going to flip our fraction and that will make the outside exponent positive. So we get 125 raised to the two thirds over 216 raised to the two thirds. So if we take 125 and square it, we get 15, 625. Take the cubed root of it, 216 squared is 4, 6, 6, 5, 6. Cube root of both of those will lead us to 25 over 36. 36 here. Okay, excellent. All right, 7.2 is pretty long. So I have it split up a little bit. Okay, so let's look at these. Um, we obtain an alternative definition of A to the MN by applying the power rule for exponents differently than the earlier definition. So um, A to the MN would become A to the A, one over N raised to the M, or we can take A to the M equal and raise it to the one over N. In most cases, it is easier to use um, the first one as opposed to the second one. Uh, and all indicated roots are real numbers, then we can do this. That is raise a to the nth power and then take the nth root or take the nth root of the a and then raise it to the nth power, okay? All right. Okay, so converting between radicals and rational expressions. Using the definition of rational expressions, we can simplify many problems involving radicals by converting the radicals to numbers with rational exponents. After simplifying, we can convert the answer back to radical form if required. So we're going to go from one to the other. And then if it's necessary to go back, we will. All right, so here we have A is 21 to the one half. So if we just wanted to write that in uh, radical form, that would just be the square root of 21. Square root of 21, can't do anything with it. Excuse me, so that is what it is. B is 17 to the five fourths power. So that's the fourth root, 17 to the fifth. Again, can't really do anything with that. Mm. All right, so we would have 4t to the 3 fifths power plus 4t to 
the three thirds power here. One of the ones um, four is inside and four is outside. So this one it's outside. I think I wrote that wrong in my notes, uh, in my notebook. I think I meant to put these 17 in parentheses. And so I may have written that wrong in class. It needs to be like that if you're gonna use parentheses. So uh, I'm pretty sure the five is underneath the radical because it's the exponent that goes with the, with the number, just like down in three. Let me check the textbook real quick. Nope, so they're having us use these rules and they're making us use them for a reason, I'm sure, but they can be confusing. So definitely whatever the rule is previously, so right here, this rule, you wanna make sure that you're using whatever rule is coming before each section. So here, we do want to make it to be the fourth root of 17 whole thing to the fifth power. So whole thing to the M power. Here we'll have four on the outside, cubed root of T. Oh, sorry, read that one wrong, the fifth root of t, this whole part cubed. And now here we have to pay attention because it's going to be um, reciprocal or flipped. And then we do one over the fifth root of W whole thing squared. And E is probably all of our favorites. You just take the fourth root of a squared minus b squared. All right, if you guys have questions on this, uh, definitely ask me before the exam. Okay, um, here we want to go the opposite direction. So we're going to go from the cubed root of 15, and we would make it 15 to the one third. Remember, the exponent is the numerator, and the denominator is the index. But if we can continue, we definitely should um, finish it out. 15 to the one third, we can't really do anything about that. However, um, 
four to the two fourths is the same as four to the one half, which is the square root of four, which gives us plus or minus two. I'll go with X here, but I think I would also accept X or plus or minus X because this is an even index. All right, so here is some rules with exponents and they have nice little examples for you. I would definitely pay attention to these. Um, Let's look at some of them. So a to the r times a to the s, they're taking and adding the exponents. So if we are multiplying, if we are multiplying, then we are adding the exponents. If we are dividing, then we are subtracting the exponents. If we're doing a power to a power, we are multiplying the exponents. If we have a power outside, then we distribute it inside to the exponents. Same thing over here. If it's a fraction, we're still distributing the exponent. A negative on top will lead to a positive on the bottom. And a negative on the top and bottom will lead to a positive if you flip the reciprocal. All right, so that is the first set of notes. Um, I am going to share those with you. Give me one second to come back for the second half. Okay, so here's the last two questions that go with lesson 7.2. Um, we are going to use product rule for this one. So five and one fourth times five and two thirds. Uh, they are being multiplied and they have the same base, which is very important. So we will do five to the one fourth plus two thirds. We need an LCD here of 12. So we would have to do five and then um, to get from four to 12, we multiply by three. So multiply by three on the top and on the bottom. And then to get to 12 from three, we multiply by four. So multiply by four on the bottom and on the top as well. So that gives us five to the three twelves plus eight over 12. So we have a total here of uh, five to the 11 twelves. Okay. B, I don't even need to write B. I can just do it straight from here. Uh, it's, a sub, it's a division, so we're going to subtract. We have same bases. So three fifths minus seven fifths. What's nice is that they don't need an LCD. We're already good to go on that. So we're going to do nine to the three minus seven over five. So that'll be nine to the negative four fifths. To make it positive, we want to do one over nine to the four fifths positive. Remember, we always want to answer in positive, um, positive exponents as often as humanly possible. Here, we're going to distribute just on the top. The other one uh, on the bottom would distribute everywhere, but here would be r to the two thirds times eight over one t to the one fourth times eight over one over t. So that would be r to the 16 thirds and then t the four and the eight cancel to give us t squared over t. So it'll be r to the 16 thirds t to the two minus one. So that's just r to the 16 thirds t. 
And we got that one done. Okay, here we're going to distribute to each piece. Now, I would recommend distributing first because negative times negative will give us a positive. So let's just see where we're at. And then if we need to move things around, we can move things around. So also don't forget the two gets it as well. So we'll have two to the negative three. That will have to move, but we'll do it in the next step. Then we'll have x to the one half times negative three, y to the negative two thirds times negative three. Uh, over one, over one, x to the negative three fifths, neg times negative three over one, and then y to the negative one fifth times, uh, that looks like a negative 45. Let me rewrite that better. Negative one over five times negative three over one. And then let's make everything nice. So um, two cubed is eight, but it's a negative three. So we're gonna move it down to make it eight on the bottom. And then we have X to the negative three halves. And then we have Y now is gonna be the threes cancel negative times negative is a positive so it'll be a positive two and then on the bottom we have uh negative times negative is a positive so we'll have x to the nine fifths and then negative times negative is positive so we will have y to the three fifths now everybody is good except for the x however what we can do is we can subtract because we have division. So it will be, um, it will be y to the two minus three fifths on top and then eight x to the nine fifths ends up being plus three halves cause it's minus minus, okay? Do we all see that? It's a minus minus situation. So um, let's pull it out. Okay, so if we rewrote this, it would be x to the negative three halves minus nine fifths. Still going to end up getting us a an X on the bottom, but let's work it this way. So we need an LCD of 10. So that'll give us X to the negative. Um, two times five gives you 10. So times five times five times two times two. That'll give you a negative 15 minus 18. Then I'll give you x to the negative 33 over 10. But if we're bringing it to the bottom, which we have to because it's negative, that'll give you 33 over 10. And that is, make sure you guys know that is an exponent. So 33 over 10, all right. I'm gonna actually leave that work there. Just gonna title it. All right. And then this last part, we would need an LCD here of just five. So that would give you Y to the 10 minus three over five leaves us with y to the seven fifths. 
over 8x to the 33 over 10. Okay, excellent. I understand if that one's a little bit hard to follow, you may need to watch that piece a couple different times, but that's, um, that's the work we have to do for it. So that is what it is. All right, this one's kind of nice. We are doing a di a distribution here. So the way it works is we take Y to the two thirds plus one third, plus y to the two thirds plus five thirds. LCDs are already the same. So we end up with y to the um, three over three, which is just the first, so just y, and then y to the seven thirds. But unfortunately we cannot do anything else. That's the most we can do there, all right? Again, make sure you guys um, work through problems like this because you will definitely need to understand how to do them. All right, so this last one, we just have to write back into exponential form to kind of solve things. So here we have the fifth root of y cubed times uh, the cubed root of y. That will give us y to the three fifths. Sorry times y to the one third. So we need an LCD here of 15. So we multiply top and bottom here by three and top and bottom here by five. So we end up with y to nine fifteenths plus five fifteenths, which will give us y to the 14. 15s. I always do this. I can just go straight for B. So this will be y to the 3 fourths divided by y to the 5 halves. We need an LCD of 4. And it's also going to be subtracting because it's division. So that'll be y to the three fourths uh, minus five halves. And then uh, three fourths stays the same. Here we need to multiply by two, multiply by two. So um, if we make it one fraction, be three minus 10 over four. So that gives us y to the negative seven over four. So we just have to finish it out by putting it over a one to make it a fraction. All right, last one for this set, we actually have to do a power uh, to a power. So it's gonna be y to the one third raised to the one half. Um, so we just do one third times one half. And that gets us y to the one sixth power. If we wanted to write it back, it would look like the sixth root of y. So I would accept either of those. All right, that is it for uh, section 7.2. I will see you shortly for lesson 7.3.